Yeah, hi there. These comments are for EH, and uh, you are one of my students in my level six TOEFL class, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. You posted integrated speaking practice test number 16. So what I want to do now is, is to listen to your response and give you some comments. So here we go. The listening passage explains how Glazier is formed. First, Glazier's... Okay, so far, so your introduction, it, it's summarizing the main point or purpose of the lecture. I like how you're using the simple present there to explain the information. That's the appropriate, uh, I think, verb tense you can use for these types of speaking assignments. Begin to form when snow remains in the same area till around. That one word is remains, remains. You have to more clearly pronounce that. A little bit difficult to understand what you're saying there. And the snow will transform into Second, new layers of... Now, one thing I like here, you're using a series of transition words like first, second, third, and that exactly matches your topic or your thesis in the beginning, so there's a fairly clear connection of ideas in your response, so it's easy to kind of follow what you're saying so far, so... For snowberry and compress the pivot... Okay, let's go back to what you said there, just for a second here. There's of a snowberry and compresses. Now you want to say the snow berries and compresses. This is what we call grammatical word endings. When you're putting S's on the ends of your verbs, sometimes, like in the word compress, you have to create a new syllable, in which case you'll say compresses. In other cases, when you put S on the end, you want to put a kind of a Z sound like berries. So berries and compresses in those cases. So if you want to learn more about that, go to my online course and go to syllable division and grammatical word endings. This is in the uh, pronunciation section of my course and you can learn more about that. All right? Test the previous layers every year and this compression forces the snow takers to lies. Then the grains grow larger and the air so look at that, and then the glacier, you want to pronounce that a little more clearly, the glacier grows larger. Space gets smaller, causing the snow increase in density. I would say causing the snow to increase in density, so I would use an infinitive after that noun, so causes the snow to increase in density. Causing the snow increase in density. After about two winters, the snow turns into fur, okay. which is about half as dense as water. Over time... Exactly. So that's an important concept that is mentioned in the lecture, that idea of fern. And it's kind of an intermediate state between the snow uh, and the the water or whatever, but that was a, a great way to phrase that. You don't have to worry about using a synonym there because that's kind of a specific concept that was mentioned in the lecture. Large ice crystals become compressed that the air pockets... No, wait a minute. You're having some grammar issues right here. Let's go back to what you just said there. Time. Large ice crystals become compressed that... You would say they become so compressed that... So this is kind of what's called parallel structure. When you're using so, you want to use that. So be careful about that. If you want to learn more about parallel structure, you can go to the grammar section of my course and you can look at the lesson. It actually is titled Parallel Structure. The air pockets inside of the ice becomes smaller and smaller. For most glaciers, this process takes over a hundred years. Yeah, that's right. In the end, glaciers' weight becomes so heavy that it begins to move downhill because of the forces. Yeah, but because of the forces of what? Because of the forces of gravity, right? So gravity begins moving or pushing the glacier, helping the glacier to go downhill. All right, so let's take a look at your response. Now that the next question is, what is your score? How many points out of 30 would you get on this particular task? And then what does this grade actually mean for your uh, elective class, right? 
So first of all, let's go to the rubrics. I will include the rubrics in this email to you so you can see exactly why you got the score you did. So let's talk about three areas, delivery, language use, and topic development. Delivery, as I said, sometimes I have to replay, I have to go back to listen to what you said so you have some unclear articulation in there sometimes. So either it's a vowel, maybe a consonant sound, you might not be pronouncing all the syllables in the word, but you have some problems. Now what I like about your delivery is you're speaking fluently and you are trying to vary your tone. So that's a good sign. Language use, as I said, you had some minor problems throughout the speech with language use, so be careful, I think, with parallel structure. Be careful about your subject-verb agreement. Uh, topic development, I think you had a complete, you had an accurate response. I liked how you framed it from the point of view of the lecture. The lecture says, the lecture claims, the speaker says. So it's very clear that you're actually summarizing this information. So uh, I'm going to put you right now at about uh, 2.50 out of 4. This is going to give you 19 points out of 30 uh, for the TOEFL IBT. Now let's take a look at our class. If you go to the syllabus, if you go to page 3 in the syllabus and you look at, actually I'm looking at the wrong one here, hold on. Okay, if you go to, actually it is page 3, so if you go to page 3, a 2.5 is going to give you an 85% on this particular assignment. Alright, anyway, thank you very much for completing this, and uh, keep up the good work.